Hey, Vinny Melkis here. I'm actually sick, so I'm sitting on my bed, but I wanted to talk about how I caught my fish on Lake Mead in the U.S. Open, <clears throat> particularly day one. Day two, yeah, I had some issues, and it kind of set me back, but I was sitting in 11th by like a tenth of a pound, literally probably less than half a pound from being in the top uh, three, and we had our opportunities. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to talk about it, because right now that bike's still going on, and there's still a lot of, it's good fall fishing, fish are grouping up. Well, what happened was that, you know, I actually found like a couple of mega schools. I'll call it a mega school. One of them was a few hundred fish and they'd be there all morning. Um, I actually caught our largest fish. We were catching a lot of fish, a lot of under, you know, under 13 or anything from 11 to 13 inches, um, which was a blast. If you're just there to go uh, fun fishing, then it's awesome. And you could pretty much throw any kind of plastic, but uh, how we were getting them, how I re we got our biggest fish, uh, my partner and I on the first day, because it's a you know pro am event, but you also are kind of like a team. Uh, my biggest smallmouth came on this dude. It's a Sammy, the old school Sammies, in a natural color. And then he also was throwing a larger, uh, like solid bone white, um, kind of like a Sammy bait, and he had a really nice. Probably the biggest smallmouth I've ever seen on me come and chase it. And then I had that thing chasing on me. But on my biggest one, I broke my rod, but I was just throwing it on a six, which everybody has their preferences on it, but I actually like this as a six to eight medium power uh, rod. But I broke it while fighting the fish, and I actually uh, took, and for you, if you ever have this kind of uh, moment on the water, what I, I did is I had some old cardboard from a, a Bay Energy gym. I actually wrapped it and then took some electrical tape and it worked for the rest of the tournament. Now I got to send it into St. Croix, get it fixed, which are usually really good about that. Uh, the second key bait, which in practice, this was awesome. So um, the second key bait, which I thought was going to play a bigger role in the tournament, but it did give me one key largemouth on day one that helped us uh, get to that almost uh, double digit weight. And that was the spy bait. And I actually had three of them tied on because it was so key. In practice, it helped me found fine fish. And I was catching large fish. I'm talking about I had a three something and, a, and I had a four to jump off of the boat in practice. Of course, that's practice. You can't you win practice. doesn't really matter. But I was throwing a 90. And I had a two 90s and then an 80. An 80, I was throwing it on six pound uh, fluorocarbon. And then this one, I had it on two different ones. So this one right here is on 10. And then I had another one on a similar rod setup with eight. And uh, I did a lot better on eight pound test with that and the six pound, just counting it down. Literally I'd see fish at a certain depth and it didn't really matter the color. I had a darker one that I'd try to use in the morning and then I had this color in a 90 as well. And, and later in the day on that clear water that seemed to work in practice. And then, you know, for my one key fish that's uh, on day one, of course caught some little fish on it too. But uh, on that, you could see a little bit of difference in the way the lure you were able to trace with the eight versus the 10 and the oscillating mo uh, movement on the spy on that spy bait. But I could see the fish on the graph and uh, see where they're sitting up. Of course, they're moving around because they're schooling. So once you see them at a certain area, when they calm down, you can really trace it and you can get them to react. But in general, they're moving around in coves. I mean, you'd see piles of them and then they'd be up and then they'd be down and then they'd be over here and then they come around and then it's like oh they're gone and then all of a sudden they're back till midday uh then they would go then they literally disperse i think that's to do you know the bait fish dispersion but i actually found so i found two, one mega school another very large school on another part of the lake and then a smaller school but how i how i caught a lot of my key fish and even on day three came in with uh one of our keepers real quick at the last bit of the day was um this a drop shot. So I had a little extra, extra long leader. I had two of these rigged up, one with a different type of worm. And then another key bait that played, which my partners would use, which I probably should have thrown myself, but I figured when you have a team event like that, you can afford to allow somebody to th throw something else while you do some, something totally different in order just to keep things honest. And he was throwing a, a NACO rig. Um, and it, it panned pan down and got us two really good fish. And on the day one, we didn't even throw it, uh, me and my partner, because we, we were calling. I mean, we were having a good time. The other thing I ought to mention on the top wire deal, it actually saved my bacon a couple times, was, you know, I have the Sammy here, and I don't have it to show you right now, but they make a smaller version of this. And I, was, I had the smaller version uh, 
uh, Sammy, and it was a you know a tr another translucent or transparent. Or I can't remember the, which one is uh, prevalent or which one is the right term, but you can see through it. Um, I throw that on a spinning rod actually, and uh, man, I almost saved us on the day three. Uh, that granted, some, I wanted to talk about day one, but day three, I had a couple of keeper fish. They were probably about a pound and a halfers. And they came off on that, but I was able to locate them, and I came through with the drop shot and got them. Uh, got one uh, that wasn't the one that rolled up on it, but uh, but it was just a mistake. But that's how I was catching them: small topwaters, translucent, transparent topwaters, uh, finding them, and then all of a sudden you'd see the school on your graphs, and they'd be moving around. Well, they were pushing a lot of bait. You could see the shad were about you know uh, two to three inches. These were mature shad. I didn't see any of the yearlings. Usually they'd be slurping, but this bait right here, which is a mega bass, has a dog, and then also some other uh, baits that were similar colored um, worked well. And then my partners were throwing some smaller uh, young dingers, and they were wacky rigging those, and that those seemed to work too. But uh, all my stuff on my spinning rods is six pound test on day one that really played well, and in practice I really figured that one out because I was throwing some stuff on seven pound sunline and I didn't I didn't have that there with me I had some in Viz, Vizic six pound you could take it and you could see the diameter you can if you really look at it you can see the diameter difference in that now uh, that played key you could see just the way it acted so I changed that up and it really helped because some of these these fish have one it's clear water they're pretty finicky and they have been pressured the area of the lake I was fishing there's a lot of local pressure people throwing casting nets all kinds of jazz and kayakers and then other anglers uh, until tournament day, then they weren't even really there. Really, there's only six boats I think we've seen that were in the tournament uh, on day one. Uh, but that's how we did it. You know what? I caught, um, I think, one fish on a, like a jig with a, you know, a Yamamoto uh, double tail grub, which I came in the event thinking that was going to play more of a, a factor, and I'm sure it did with other anglers. Uh, what I would have done differently, I think I'd have thrown that Nako rig a little bit more. I probably, next time I go there, I'm going to have one on definitely probably throw that and I'd probably go back to you know more bottom dates um, and then really key in on those areas because what would happen is on the day one which worked out for us there we went in there we caught our limit and then I ran to a couple other areas that I'd caught some bigger fish and we did call up day two we went in there and didn't do very well and I caught a lot of small fish and then I gave up on it I should have really stuck with it stuck with that area because then on day three, when I abandoned and I went to a different area, which I shouldn't have done too, that's another mistake, but I had these other fish. We went over there, we pulled off two really good smallmouth. I ran back to that area. It was able, had those two roll rolls, and I came off on my top water, went through with the drop shot, picked one up. But it was so late in the day, we really didn't have a whole lot of time to go back over. In reality, what I should have done is just stuck to the spot that you know really got me through on day one. Um, I think I had the right baits. I think I had the right fish. Uh, but if you're going to Lake Mead or, uh, well, Lake Mead is pretty unique in itself, but if you're going to Lake Mead any time from now until, you know, we get into real cold fronts, these baits ought to work when you get into the cold fronts, uh, when you start getting fish staged up a little deeper. I had another bait that I was really using, uh, in practice to help me find some fish, but I was catching all kinds of fish. I was catching bluegill, stripers, whatnot. That was a blade bait. Um, on the same rig that I was actually throwing the uh, um, the little miniature top wire. And I throw those on spinning rigs. Well, I'll go into that in another another video. But for now, uh, that's what I was doing. I really thought the spin bait would have panned out a little bit more on day two and three, it kind of petered out. But I did all right, I'm pretty happy with that event because I was able to find what I believe was the winning fish and I, I proved that on day one. Um, and I just, uh, then, then uh, you know, with various equipment issues on day two and three, and then my own mind, I wasn't able to really uh, capitalize on that. But uh, I found them, I capitalized on it on day one, and I still, we still lost. We still had opportunities on day ones. So we should have been in, in the top. But anyway, I will see you guys later. Uh, please like and subscribe this uh, on this video, and I will be. Um, where's my next one? We got the AZ Open with one bass, which is an awesome event, which is going to be a blast. That should be fun. Immediately after that, I got a blast off to the first, uh, the league, National Professional Fishing League event. Um, and that's in Eufaula, Alabama. 
and then the rest of the schedule is kind of hush hush right now but from there uh, there's a couple other events I believe I'll be fishing but there's going to be six NPFL events that are scattered throughout the year in various locations in the Midwest and South um, East and it's going to be it's going to be interesting um, but I have a feeling that uh, the confidence I've I've gathered from this U.S. Open is going to, you know, dovetail or parlay into this the AZ Open, and from there, I think if I can keep this momentum rolling, you're going to see me in the top in a lot of these events. Even though a lot of them I haven't even been, I've never been to, but uh, it's all the same pattern. It's having you know the equation there, what you do in practice and how you use that practice, and what you do in the event. There's a number of variables there and control all you can and I think that I'm on the right track and I, I believe that we're gonna you're gonna see me up there and uh and I'm excited for the NPFL I'm excited for the AZ Open and then next year's US Open which I believe I'll be a contender I'm only getting better and I love Lake Mead I understand the lake but I understand it to almost a detriment where I have stuff I need to just pick an area and really uh really you know nest down and I wish I tried to do this year but uh I end up you know, running around a little bit, and that sometimes kills you. But you always hear that if you stay in somewhere, you're dead and mean. But that's not necessarily the tr the truth there. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Peace.